gotta know what you're getting into. This is not a game. You think I want to watch the police? Oh, there's a cop. If you would get over, get over. This is something that I have to do because nobody else wants the job. You just stay with me and I'm just going to show you this is, this is what we do when we see cops. It was a hot summer day in August 2014 when an unarmed black teenager, Michael Brown, was gunned down in a quiet residential complex in Ferguson, Missouri. This day not only sparked protests that roared the area for weeks over how the case was being handled, but it brought the nation into a long overdue conversation about race and policing and galvanized the movement of filming the police and exposing racist police tactics. For David Witt, Michael Brown's neighbor at the time, it changed his life forever. So right now we're in the heartbeat of St. Louis, going to meet up with David Witt, who's a member of Cop Watch. Cop Watch is a community organization that, that arms civilians with cameras in an effort to patrol the police and to protect the rights of those in the community. This Campfield Drive right here, this Campfield Green Apartments, this is where Mike Brown was killed. So this is where it all started for us, the whole police accountable and, and, and an active approach to like educating the public. So we're gonna go down here just to pay our respects. You know, it's crazy, man. I feel like I've, I've seen the street so many times since 2014. When that happened, it's like I saw myself as Mike Brown for a minute. We've all had that, that interaction with the cop, most brothers, in which shit could have went left. You know what I'm saying? You don't understand what some of these young kids, where their mindset was at. They was like, oh man, this dude could just kill me and nothing happened? They look at us like, man, what y'all doing? What y'all going, y'all going to let them kill us? These are children. So yeah, I didn't get mad when, when these young kids was ready to go to war. I would too if nobody was protecting me. But you know what we did? Man, we at least for a moment, we got a lot of young brothers to put their guns down and pick up a camera. What's up, big man? What's his name? Yes, David. David, how you doing, sir? Hi. Peace. How you doing? What's up? Yeah. What's your name? Arroya. Arroya. Right on. How old are you, Arroya? Seven. Seven. That's a strong Arroya. Yeah. All right, so this is the office here. Most of the work is done out of the house, right? Yeah, so most of my work is done out of this house. I made this sign right here the day after Mike Brown was killed. I used to point this one to the cops. This one I was on my protest activist mode. Today, David is running a session for new cop watchers with the founder of Oakland's we'll Cop Watch, this, we'll Jacob Crawford. So we're gonna be going through this in entirety today because some of you are actually gonna be training and doing Cop Watch College uh, over the next year. So yeah, we're gonna go from the beginning. We're part of a group, an idea, a movement called Cop Watch. Uh, cop Watch is the direct nonviolent observation of the police. We're not there to catch video of police hurting people. We really are out there to stop it from happening. Jacob, he came out to Ferguson. He didn't know me. You know, that's how the whole thing started. Hello, my name is David, and right now you standing at the original Ground Zero where, where, where uh, Michael Brown was murdered at. We go out with video cameras, and we make our presence known. We let the person that's being stopped know that we're there to advocate for them. We let the police know that we're there to advocate for the person stopped, and we simply document. But more often than not, um, we are a deterrent to police misconduct. You cited me for what he says I was riding my bike on the sidewalk, but really what we were doing was approaching a cop watch stop. He doesn't like us cop watching. When I first watched some videos of active cop watches online, I gotta say I was a bit skeptical of their tactics. Guys were getting in the face of police and being aggressive, and to me, it seemed like they were potentially making the situation worse. You can film. I have no problem with that. Right? Right. You don't have to explain that to me. I'm glad you said that on this camera, Sergeant. Sergeant. Am, am, am I being detained? Am, am I being detained for something? I'm not doing anything. OK. Why, you, you, you don't know. I'm not being detained. Filming the cops, like, you can, you know, prevent the cops from harassing someone else. But then that cop then turns his attention on you. Record that shit over there. Yes, sir. Right. We make sure in our trainings that we, we're letting them know that when you go out, you're basically standing in the line of fire to protect someone else. I don't like this shit. Police always fucking with somebody. Seriously, this ain't like the you're gonna get shot. I'm not gonna be responsible. That's fine. I got a right to film. Brown 
when I got down, he's already on the ground. They put the cuffs on him. You know what I'm saying? But the dude surrendered. Everybody said that he surrendered. You know? But that cops had their guns out. They was trying to kill this dude. So I think we saved his life. These cameras can be your best friend and they can also be your worst enemy. But just be very thoughtful when you're trying to defend yourself with a camera about how to use it. We over the years have developed a series of trainings called Cop Watch College where we can take the best practices that we've learned and that we've been taught and apply them. God forbid something happens, we have trained people to be good documenters, good witnesses. And so people are documenting the time, the date, the location, the identity of the officer, the license plate of the car, the victim, documenting things as they happen. This black cop right here, he knows I'm over here and he's constantly looking. See, this, this, this video raises so many questions of police conduct. The cop is holding her hand. They're not even locking her up. So at this point, I'm assuming that no crime was committed. So what you're saying is that you might not know if this is illegal or not, but for the sake of the family, you want this documented so they can use it in court potentially. Absolutely. There was this one lady that I offered to um, appear in court for her on behalf, you know what I'm saying, saying what I saw. As a matter of fact, I showed up to court with her that day to give her the video. And you know what? They threw her case out, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's good. Give a cop something to think about when he jump out that car. If you think that somebody could be possibly looking, he might look around for a minute. Mm. You know, this is our hope. The relationship between residents and police in Ferguson became even more contentious following a scathing DOJ report found that police had arrest warrants out for 75% of the population. And the Ferguson PD was using both excessive ticketing and these warrants to generate city revenue at the expense of the most vulnerable and poor members of the community. Ferguson police officers routinely violate the Fourth Amendment in stopping people without reasonable suspicion, arresting them without probable cause, and using unreasonable force against them. The use of ticketing quota systems for cops has led to widespread abuse and racial profiling in black communities. And while most officers are resistant to speaking out against police misconduct, even if it's caught on video, I met one officer who was pushing for more police accountability. Sergeant Edwin Raymond of the NYPD is actually suing his department for illegal ticketing and the use of racial profiling in policing. Now, what gives you the motivation to basically counter uh, the, uh, the blue shield of silence? I mean, it starts with understanding, because, you know, I, I, I become a cop, I, I retire. Th during the whole process, I'm a black man, you know, who exper I've experienced these things. And when it comes to policing in America, I realize that there are issues, you know, and, uh, and that's the motivation to try to do what I can. Are you familiar with Cop Watch? I am, yeah. The, the police watch groups, they have every right to do so. Legally, they're, they're covered. Um, and police officers should, shouldn't feel bothered or threatened by that. I do have a critique of, of the cop watch groups, though, because a lot of times, just on some videos that I've watched, they seem to kind of agitate the situation as opposed to simply observing. Or the officer never gets the benefit of the doubt. And I get it. I, the cynicism that leads, you know, that causes people to just, just be so critical of the system, I get it. But sometimes I notice in the, in the videos that I've seen, they're, they're almost creating the situation. You know, they, that, that's what I've seen. It's stand back and observe. That's all good. You know, if anything, I encourage it. But when you're agitating, when you're yelling out certain things, it, it, to me, that almost defeats the purpose. But residents and people like David are still skeptical that the police will act justly without constant surveillance. They're not arresting drug dealers. Prostitutes, we see plenty of them walking down the street. They are arresting people that's getting off of work. So I'm getting ready to take you to a few spots that is known for cop activity. Oh, there's a cop. Flip you and get over, get over, go ahead. Go ahead, there's nobody there. You better bust you right there. Left right there, we seen flashing lights right here. It looks like a cop may have pulled somebody over. <laughs> I want you to take that, that uh, side, come down, I'm gonna take this side. We just spotted a cop pulling somebody over, and we gonna uh, make sure this person's rights being protected. The goal is for nothing to happen. The cop does his job, this is a traffic stop, nothing, he's not gonna do nothing wrong. As you can see the reactions from the police officer, he's kind of nervous. 
because we're watching him do his job, it seems like the driver's a little more at ease because she has uh, somebody watching her back and uh, a lot of people in the community here are, are, you can hear the reaction from them like they were glad that we were here. So, you know, it's a good thing. So these people is gonna be let go. This is one of those ones where we don't, we're not gonna mess with the people. I am gonna stop her with this just to let her know that we were filming. But, but they say that your place was bad. People out there and grab my car, they never told me that. And when I got out the car, I was kind of apprehensive about following you. Yeah. What situation, I mean, you could read it from a couple of yards away, right. but when do you know that this might not be a good situation for me to be within 30 or 35 feet? Well, a good indication you might not want to be too close to a cop is when you have his gun out of the holster. Then you should be really alarmed. When the cop is in a situation like this, it's just good to approach calmly. There's, there's levels of police misconduct. You know what I'm saying? Some of his verbal abuse, some of his physical abuse, and some of it is outright murder. He's not, he's not the murderer, he's not the killer cop, but it still levels to what, what cops are doing. Now, how do you think movements like Cop Watch uh, has and will change uh, how cops respond in situations? Well, when, you're, when you know you're being watched, you, you, most people are gonna function quite different, um, so whether it's cop watch or body cams, more cameras and inspiring more people to, to pay attention to their officers and record, it, it's, it's gonna cause officers to mostly fall in line, you know? They gave the young woman eight tickets. Yes. Over a hundred bucks a piece. Yes. Let's say, conservatively, that's 850. Right. Now, do you think that she'll ever be able to pay those tickets off? Do you think she'd be able to pay $800 and she got four kids? Who knows what her income is? The cop did his job, not knocking that job, you know? But when this officer discretion come into play for black communities? When I was young, my first interaction with the cop was a cop smacking me in my face. And for the 20 years thereafter, my approach to cops was don't fuck with them, let them do their job. Yeah. Right? I can protest, I can fucking scream, I can file lawsuits, I can do all that shit. But it's my job to get home to my wife and my kids. Right? Yeah. I mean, do you think that maybe part of taking responsibility is to get back home to your wife and kids and be a father? My perspective on what's important comes back to my children. They have no role models. You know what I'm saying? They have nothing to aspire to. So. I have a responsibility to be something more to my children. I don't want my children to grow up afraid. I want them to grow up smart and educated to understand how to handle these type of situations, not to be the one to just lay down. You know what I'm saying? We've been laying down far too long for nothing.